Hi everybody! Welcome back to my kitchen. It's Christmas week and if you don't already know your menu for Christmas or Christmas Eve, I have a wonderful recipe for you today. And even if you do know it, which most of you probably do, this recipe is a fabulous uh, beef stew any time of the year. You could serve it for New Year's, New Year's Eve, or any time of the year. And it's perfect for a big gathering because it makes a lot. Today, we're traveling to the country of Belgium and we're going to make Finnish stew. Now, first, let me tell you a little bit about Belgium. I loved Belgium, oh my gosh. What a beautiful country. And in particular, I loved the small town of Bruges. Bruges has about 120,000 people, so it's not very large, but it's very, um, European village-ish with lots of wonderful uh, old historic architecture and uh, in Belgium they have three languages. Most people speak Dutch, many people speak French, and some people speak German, and everyone speaks English. So why do they have all these languages? Well again like I've talked about before Belgium is one of those places that the borders have changed and rotated so many times over the generations. For many years, it was known as Flanders. It was a territory, not a country, mostly associated with Holland. And that's where the Dutch language comes from. So Flemish uh, is a word you hear a lot. It's also a language. And that's what the people of Belgium are for the most part they are Flemish ancestors from the Flemish people. Now, when we were in Bruges, the food there was spectacular and the beer was amazing. The city of Bruges has 54 brew pubs and I think we visited it probably at least half of those, maybe more. There's one brew pub that in 2016 moved its brewing operation out of town, and now there's a pipe that runs all the way under the city, bringing the beer to their brew pub. So literally, the beer flows in the streets of Bruges. Bruges is a beautiful, beautiful town. I highly recommend going there. So Belgium is known for a lot of different foods, chocolate for one, and Belgian waffles, however, you don't order a Belgian waffle in Belgium. That's kind of an American thing. They do have waffles in Belgium, but they don't call them Belgian waffles, and they don't eat them for breakfast. So we've sort of Americanized that here in the United States. Um, there are a lot of other wonderful foods in Belgium, and this dish I'm sharing with you today, Flemish beef stew, is really one of the historic um, popular dishes. It's very much like beef bourguignon. However, beef bourguignon is made with wine. And guess what Flemish beef stew is made with? Beer, of course it is. So we're using a dark stout beer today in our recipe. So let's get cooking. I have on my stovetop my Dutch oven with two tablespoons of olive oil and I'm bringing it up to heat. Here I have two pounds of stew meat, beef stew meat, that I bought already chopped. And I've had it sitting here on a paper towel for a little while now, drying out a little bit, with some salt and pepper on it. I'm now gonna place this in batches into my oil. I don't wanna crowd it, I want it to cook uh, with lots of room. So I'm gonna get started with that. Here we go. So our, gra our um, stew beef, I have the second batch in here now. And the reason you want to use a Dutch oven is this is going to go into the oven after it's on the stovetop. So if you don't have a Dutch oven, it's important that you use a pan that can go from stove to oven. So I ground my meat and I put it on a plate because you don't want to lose all those wonderful juices. Those are going to go back into the pot. But right now, I've got all my beef nice and brown. I have six pieces of bacon. I have thick cut bacon, which I love. Um, and some recipes don't call for bacon, 
But I know the uh, one I ate in Belgium had bacon in it, so I'm using bacon today. So this is six pieces of thick cut bacon that I've chopped up and that goes into our pan to cook next. I've had our bacon in the pot for a couple of minutes. It's not completely crispy, but it's nearly there. So before it's done cooking, I'm going to add our onions. The onions are gonna cook in the drippings from the bacon, so we don't need to add any other oil. I have two yellow onions and one red onion that I have sliced really thin, and these go into our pot now with our bacon. Now these are gonna cook for about um, 10 minutes. We wanna get them nice and limp. If it looks like I need some more oil, I will add it, but I'm pretty sure uh, the bacon drippings are going to be enough. We wanna caramelize these onions, and we're gonna add some brown sugar a little bit later. But right now we're just going to let them cook. I wanted to tell you about our experience having Flemish stew in Bruges. We actually went to the home of a, a Belgian couple in the town of Bruges and had dinner with them through uh, a website called With Locals, and they made us a wonderful dinner. We didn't have Flemish stew that night. We had shrimp and cheese, and oh my gosh, we ate like kings. But they recommended to us that we go to a restaurant called the Flamsche Pot. It's a historic uh, Flemish restaurant in the heart of Bruges, and the building itself was just something to behold. If I can find the photo, I'll put it here on the video so you can see how beautiful it was. And that's where we experienced our first Flemish stew, and it was amazing. I've always been a big fan of beef bourguignon, so I knew I was going to like this, and boy, I did. I think I licked the bottom of the bowl. It was so good. So that's one thing about this kind of dish is it's just so comforting and hearty and perfect for winter. Even though we were in Bruges in the summertime, it still was spectacular. So that was how I was introduced to Flemish stew. So I'm gonna let our onions cook for a little bit longer and then we'll add the next ingredient. So right now, my kitchen smells heavenly. The bacon and the onions together, ha ah, fantastic. So our, the onions are nice and soft, and I'm now going to add to them two tablespoons of brown sugar. And I'm gonna let that cook for just a minute. And while that's cooking, I'm going to tell you that some recipes for Flemish beef stew have spelt. What is spelt? Spelt is a grain very similar to wheat, sometimes interchanged with farro, although they're not exactly the same thing, but they're very close. The Flemish beef stew I've had, I've had two different versions. Neither one of them had spelt in them that I know of. Um, and I kind of think perhaps it's an additive from the old days to stretch it, to make it go further. Um, but if you like that, it adds a nice little chewy texture. Um, add it, farro or spelt, whichever you can get in your grocery store and you want to cook it ahead. And it's the kind of thing you wanna cook the day before and then you'll add it at the very end after you're all done with the cooking process. Um, but I'm not using that today. Now we are adding two tablespoons of flour. We're gonna thicken it up a little bit, but we don't want the flour to burn. So, but you also want it to cook enough so you get rid of that raw flour taste. So we have to be really careful here. That's gonna add just a little bit of thickening. And now we're gonna get ready to add our wet ingredients and our herbs. But first, our browned beef has been sitting here on a plate where all the beautiful juices have collected at the bottom of the plate. And I'm gonna return all of that to the Dutch oven now. I have my oven preheated to 325 degrees, and now we're going to add one and a half cups of beef broth. 
And here's where we add our beer, the important ingredient. I'm using a local uh, microbrew from the state of Washington, Elysian, it's in, uh, from Seattle. And this is called Dragon's Tooth Stout. You can use any stout. You want a dark beer. And of course, if you can find a Belgian beer, that would be great too. But this is what I got in my local store. I have two cups of stout. And now I'm going to add two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. And then we're gonna add four, I've got, these are big, four sprigs of fresh thyme. I'm gonna throw them whole into the pot. And two whole bay leaves. And I have a third of a cup of Italian parsley here. I'm gonna put about two thirds of that into the pot and then I'm gonna save the rest for a garnish. For later. Okay, now we are going to bring this to a boil. Then we're gonna cover it and put it in the oven for two hours. So then I'll come back and show you what it looks like when we take it out of the oven. Hi everybody. Our beautiful Flemish beef stew is done right out of the oven. It was in the oven for two hours. And this recipe is supposed to serve six, but boy, I don't know. The way Arnie and I eat, <laughs> it's, I'd say it's more for four, but you can easily double and even triple this recipe very easily. I've removed the bay leaves, although I just found another one, and the thyme. So you wanna try and do that so it doesn't end up in the bowl. And depending on how long you leave it in the oven, you might be able to plate it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the bowl. Um, let me see if you can see it here. It's really reduced down. It smells really lovely. And we are going to serve this with a bottle of stout, the same one that we put into the stew. I have what I call French potatoes. This is normally very often served with Belgian fries or mashed potatoes. <clears throat> These are just fried potatoes that I learned to make from a friend of mine who lives in France. So we have these often and some green beans. So let me dish this up and we're gonna get to eating here. The color is just amazing. I don't know if that's um, possibly because we have one red onion in here and then we have white onions. I'm kind of making a mess. It smells really good. I'll bring it over so you can see it. And there it is, our beautiful Flemish beef stew. It looks like it's been cooked in red wine, but it hasn't. And let's do our other bowl. And so it's a great recipe for entertaining a beautiful winter stew. Give this recipe a try. And have a wonderful Christmas, my friends. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.